Hey, my name's Ken Andrews, and welcome to my second YouTube episode, Mixing with Templates. What is a mix template anyway? A mix template is simply something you pre-build ahead of time, either on an analog console or more likely these days in your digital audio workstation or DAW. It allows you to get started mixing or recording faster than if you were starting your session from scratch. Much of the organizational and housekeeping part of mixing can be done ahead of time. Okay, I, I, I hear you right now. Why use them? Don't you want each song you mix to be completely unique? Is it lazy to use templates? I guess there's always a chance that you will simply use all the settings from your template as is with no modifications. But for me, that's not an issue. I'm typically making quite a few changes to effects parameters, subgroup processing, reordering plugins, and tailoring all of it specifically to the song at hand. But there's also an inverse argument to be made for templates within a given album. You might actually want a certain level of consistency within an album to give a cohesive identity and a, a, a listenability to the whole experience. The thing to remember is that having a template does not lock you into the same sound for every song you're mixing. It simply saves you the time of having to pull down all those routing menus and instantiate all those plugins from scratch every time. Okay, so here's the song that I'm using um, to demo for you today. This is a song called You're Different by a really cool band that I had the pleasure to mix earlier this year. They are called The Shelters. Okay, so a few basic things about my templates. I subgroup tracks into instrument families that typically look like this. Drum kit, bass, guitars, keyboards, vocals. So we should probably distinguish between what I will call grouping and subgrouping at this point. Okay, grouping to me is simply linking tracks together so certain changes that you perform on one track are performed across all the group tracks at once. The way I set up Pro Tools is that if you see colors, that means those tracks are grouped together. Subgrouping to me is about blending the audio of multiple tracks, like my favorite example, multiple mics on a drum kit, routed into an audio auxiliary track, and then treating that mixed or subgrouped signal as a whole. Classic example is inserting a compressor on your stereo drum kit subgroup. This sounds very different than say putting an individual compressor on each drum kit track. So my preference is not to group instrument families, but to subgroup them. Meaning route all the audio from all the guitar tracks into the guitar subgroup. Now I have a quick way to simply mute all the guitars, regardless of their group status, you also now have the ability to automate the level of the post-processed guitar subgroup throughout the song. I like to place all my time-based effects, reverbs, and delays basically on auxiliary tracks and use sends to access them. The output of these effects are then routed to their respective instrument subgroup. I prefer to have all of these time-based effects on sends so I can send other tracks like toms to the snare verb, for instance, at will. Using reverb plugins individually on separate tracks is generally not a great way to manage your DSP usage, but I will do it if I'm at the end of a mix and can see I'm well under the radar of the dreaded CPU overlord. The other thing I do these days is commit these time-based effects to instrument families, meaning I only send guitars to the guitar reverb and only send drums to the drum room simulator. 
Doing it this way does take more DSP horsepower because you are running quite a few additional reverbs. So there's that to consider if you're on an older machine. But by keeping all the effects married to specific instrument groups, you end up with a lot more flexibility in tailoring the effects to the sounds you are sending to them. An added but huge benefit is the fact that you have now created a session that can be stemmed in one pass. What are stems? Well, stems are actually a pretty huge subject. I'm going to save that for a future episode. So you template your subgroups, reverbs, and delays. Great. What else do you do? Well, I'm glad you asked. I guess you could consider the final stereo bus a subgroup, but it's so important to mixing that I think it deserves its own heading here. My stereo bus processing chain? Is eight plugins really too many? I heard someone on a recording podcast recently say that if you are using more than three plugins on your stereo bus, you don't know how to mix. I don't know, maybe they're right. It's all so subjective, isn't it? For me, I know why I have each plugin there and exactly what it's doing, so it feels reasonable and it makes sense to me. But stereo bus processing? It's definitely getting in its own episode. Okay, so subgroups, stereo bus, time-based effects, anything else? That's about it, actually, when it comes to templates. Because individual tracks, they vary so wildly that trying to create templates for them can be kind of futile, so I rarely do it. I mean, there are exceptions. Okay, for instance, once I establish a lead vocal chain for an album. I will generally save that as a track preset because chances are the singer was captured with the same microphone chain in the studio for all the songs and chances are you want a consistent lead vocal sound for the whole album. Part of being good at anything is never really being truly satisfied and that's how I feel about templates. They can always be improved. Also, it's not just a matter of having one template. In fact, when I'm starting a new session, I'm typically importing session data or template info from a variety of previous sessions that I've mixed. I listen to the rough mix, then I think of a song I mixed recently that could be applicable from a template perspective, and then I pull in some or all of the subgroups and effects from that session. Templates are there to essentially save you the grind of naming tracks and instantiating plugins. I don't really want to know how many years of my life I've spent instantiating plugins. All right, so let's look at an example of adding some reverb to a snare drum mic. The first one is more of a room simulator than what we would typically call a reverb. It's the Oceanway Studios plugin by Universal Audio. This plugin was a big game changer for me. I was using Altiverb for smaller studio sized live rooms, but I find Alan Side's simulation of the studios he once ran to be much more tunable to a given sound and the UI is really a joy to use. Don't get me wrong, I still use Altiverb a lot. It has some of the most unique impulse responses out there, and it has one of my favorite vocal plates ever. As a side note, I feel like room simulators have actually become more important as less and less recordings are actually made in acoustically appealing spaces. I mean, the main reason that's happening is because the less money is being spent on the making of records. We'll get into a whole other conversation about the state of the music industry. Uh, never. Because <laughs> I don't want to talk about that stuff. If you're recording in a space that's not great, then going dry is actually a really good choice. Because using room sim plugins can really help to place instruments in an acoustic context, which can help give size, weight, and a sense of realism to instruments that were otherwise recorded very separately and therefore they're sonically detached from each other. I've actually grown to really love the control you can get from recording dry and then placing the instrument in a room sim during the mix. This is pretty much exactly what I did when Failure was recording The Heart is a Monster in 2015. I've actually worked in Ocean Way or when it was called Ocean Way in all the studios myself on multiple projects and I can definitely say that having those acoustic spaces on a send in Pro Tools is bonkers. I guess I should expect that because I've never used anything Alan Sides has had his hands on that I didn't love. 
I mean, studios, consoles, speakers, and this plug-in, especially his new speakers. Oh my God. I covet these speakers. All right, but back to the routing. So now I'm adding short snare verb to the snare mic as well. And here is the whole kit together. It's just a nice workflow. And once you like something you have, using it repeatedly will help you navigate your sessions much faster. I hope you enjoyed uh, listening to The Shelters. And I hope you check these guys out for sure. Um, the album is called Jupiter Sidecar. And uh, they're a great band. I know they're going to be playing LA pretty soon as well. So I hope you check them out. So there you have it, Mixing with Templates. I'm Ken Andrews. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you next time. Later.